How stupid. Action. Look, he knows. Look at him yeah. go. Where is this fish? This may seem like a stupid question as of now, as upon the viewing of the video I just played, you only saw a large fish eating a carrot, which isn't really indicative of any notoriety or intrigue. However, this fish, named Rufus, stylized with two Fs, was a beloved figure in the niche fandom for tiki culture, an American thematic decoration style of bars and restaurants. The community was uncharacteristically confused and angered after the whereabouts of Rufus became up in arms, and lies, scandal, and thousands of dollars somehow became promptly intertwined. So what exactly is Tiki Culture? Who is Rufus? And how did he disappear? Tiki is a term which originates in the indigenous language of New Zealand, Māori, and one use of the term is to describe wooden carvings of a humanoid figure. Carvings similar to that produced by the Māori people are found in most other Polynesian cultures, such as that of the Cook Islands and Hawaii. As Western contact with these islands increased, the word tiki found use in English, and was used to describe the style of islands within the southern Pacific. The origin of tiki culture i.e. bars and restaurants decorated in a kitschy Polynesian style, is often traced to the opening of Don's Beachcomber in 1933. The restaurant and bar served Cantonese cuisine, alongside rum cocktails and punches, and was decorated with flaming torches, flower lays, and brightly coloured fabrics. Other establishments, such as Clifton's Cafeteria and Trader Vic's, began adopting similar decor styles. These places attempted to appeal to the average American's idyllic view of regions such as Hawaii and Oceania. However, they also attempted to acknowledge the fine line between reality and stylistic choice, admitting the aid of Hollywood depictions of these regions, but also attempting to create a reasonably authentic atmosphere. As Tiki culture's popularity perpetuated, the style itself was developed further, which was perhaps most evident after the end of World War II. Many American soldiers had served within or near the Pacific, and brought back souvenirs and stories, further increasing the allure of these regions which films and the tiki bars had already set out to create. The founder of Don's Beachcomber was himself a World War II veteran, and created a variety of themed cocktails following his return. Three Dots and a Dash, a mixture of rum, fruit juices and syrups, is named for the Morse code translation of V, which in wartime meant victory. Post-war America saw a rise in the economic power of the middle class, as well as increased accessibility to air travel, both of which are cited as aiding the rise of tiki culture. The use of tiki as an adjective became more common, evident through the development of terms such as tiki punch, tiki torches, and, by the 1950s, tiki bars. The tiki bars and their hallmark complex cocktails persisted throughout the 1960s, and it was during this time that the tiki restaurant Bahuka was opened, before expanding into a second location in Rosemead, California in 1976, after the original location's lease was lost. The new location allowed for a larger dining area, and the installation of over 100 aquariums, all of which contained colourful tropical fish as decor. One such aquarium near the entrance housed Rufus, a large paku fish. However, it was also by the late 1970s that tiki culture began to diminish in popularity. The style was gradually perceived as tacky, and its drinks became too elaborate and punchy to appeal to a changing taste in favour of more simple beverages, such as white wine spritzes. Both major tiki chains and independent tiki bars suffered, and most failed to stay financially afloat. By 1980, most of the architectural examples of tiki aesthetic had been eroded in favour of newer styles, and the few which remained were found exclusively on the American West Coast upon which they had been founded. And yet, this was not quite the end of Tiki. The late 1990s saw a surprising resurgence in fans of the style. While parental aged adults mostly dismissed Tiki as old and tacky, their children saw it as something of intrigue to be repurposed and recontextualized. The emergence of trends such as urban archaeology, retroism, 
hipster culture, and tastes being more focused on irony most certainly contributed in connotation, as well as the release of Sven Kirsten's The Book of Tiki in 2000. An American heritage write-up on Tiki culture noted that New Age Tiki aficionados gathered at Tiki events, and went on road trips to search out the survivors of the era. Although many new Tiki bars opened after the turn of the century, it was also during this period that Bahuka managed to see its peak popularity. While some knew the Bahuka from their extravagant cocktails presented a light in salad bowls, and their later partnership with Costco to produce a line of salad dressing, the restaurant became well known for its extensive fish tanks, which dominated the floor space. Bahuka contained a large variety of fish species, but by far the standout occupant was Rufus, who patrons would often take photographs of and feed carrots to, the only food which he ate due to his flat humanoid teeth. A small sign underneath his tank read, Hi. My name is Rufus. I am 36 years old as of 2012. I have been in this tank my whole life, and I love it here. Please don't say I need a bigger tank, it just makes me feel fat. I can't afford therapy. I am fine, really. My twins are around the corner, referring to several other Paku fish. The fish also garnered further notoriety, after appearing in the 1998 film Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, alongside Johnny Depp. By 2006, Rufus was 30 years of age, a significantly higher lifespan than if he were in the wild, and, as aforementioned, had spent his entire life in the large tank of Bahuka, which only topped his celebrity. The fish not only became a beloved hallmark of the restaurant, but was later seen as a symbol of the revived tiki culture itself. As per most fandoms, lovers of tiki took to the internet, as it became more accessible, to discuss aspects of the style and plan events. The Tiki Central forums, which were established in 2002 at the latest, became and perpetuated as the most popular hub of activity. It was here that the legacy of Bahuka and Rufus were immortalized. Bahuka also appeared on the television program World's Weirdest Restaurants, a Food Network show in which host Bob Bloomer visited a variety of eateries renowned for their outlandish decor or theme. In the episode Something Fishy's Going On, Bahuka and Rufus were given a five minute segment. Come to Bahuka for dinner, but you leave feeling like you just had a Polynesian vacation. All right, big guy, it's my last offer. However, this reputation was not enough to keep the restaurant open. In February of 2013, the Los Angeles Magazine reported that Bahuka was set to close after 46 years of operation. Co-owner Suzanne Schneider commented, They don't want Tiki around here, they want Asian. The property was sold after one day on the market, and Schneider noted the new owner would not own the Bahuka name, so as not to clash with the still existent salad dressing line. The new owner just wants the building, the liquor license, and the fish. For about a year, Rufus remained inside the unkempt and unused Bahuka, only kept alive by the restaurant's fishkeeper, George Mustachi, who entered the lot through a side door to clean the fish tanks and feed Rufus carrots after getting off work at his new job. When the Bahuka closed, it was assumed that the building would be repurposed into a new tiki restaurant, however this theory did not transpire. Between the initial sale in 2013 and February 2014, the ownership had changed hands at least twice, and it was for the most part being left in limbo, as were the aquatic inhabitants. However, by early 2014, it seemed that the Bahuka would finally be repurposed. Alan Zhu, a restaurateur and partner in the Bahuka's latest ownership, announced plans in early 2014 to convert the site into a Chinese restaurant. He stated to the LA Times that a large amount of renovation was required before the building would be eligible to pass fire safety and structural inspections, and therefore Rufus and the other fish would have to be removed. The Tiki community, an unsurprisingly laid-back group, 
was distraught at the news. By this point, Rufus was 37 years old, and Mustachi feared that he would not survive a theoretical relocation. A thread was posted to the Tiki Central forums, attempting to find a nearby Tiki restaurant to take him in, although some suggested the fish should be taken to a more famous establishment, such as Don's Beachcomber or Damon's Steakhouse. This thread, while now inaccessible as per most of the forums, seemingly garnered genuine offers from competent restaurant owners and aquarium keepers. A Twitter hashtag was launched, hashtag save Rufus, the users of which mostly linked articles covering the story or simply noted their support. Perhaps the most notable show of support came by way of a crowdfunding campaign, which initially asked for $800 to, quote, cover fees to purchase, move, and help with Rufus's upkeep. The description also stated that, quote, two Tiki-themed restaurants and one major aquarium were interested in taking Rufus. The goal was promptly stretched to $2,500 after overwhelming support, which was also obtained alongside $200 excess. However, it was this campaign which would accentuate the developing drama. On February 19th, 2014, the fundraiser was closed and the total raised was immortalized as 2,747 US dollars. It was also on this day that the organizers of the fundraiser, a travel entity under the name Hidden Los Angeles, posted the sole update regarding the campaign. It reads, in part, as follows. Quote, Hey everybody, Lynn from Hidden LA here. First off, I want to thank everyone so sincerely. You all are amazing and really stepped up to the plate here to help Rufus find a home after it was announced that he didn't have one. We accomplished an amazing amount in a little over one week. The media was on the ball and eating up the story which is a double-edged sword. We did a great job of getting the word out, but possibly too good of a job. As many of you already know, by the time we went to meet with the people leasing the Bahuka property to negotiate for Rufus, a Mandarin interpreter in town, the owner doesn't speak English, and a firm game plan in hand, he had seen the press attention and began to see dollar signs. He told us that he now realized there was, quote, value on Rufus and refused to let him go. He believes now that Rufus will bring him press attention and customers without realizing that the press was only there due to our efforts and because of the immediacy of the story about him needing a home. We have thought long and hard about what to do with this money. When the business owner asked for us to give him the raised money to build a fancy new tank for Rufus, we refused because we know that is not what you donated your money for. You were donating to move Rufus, not remodel a Chinese restaurant. We fully recognize that you would consider that a misappropriation of these funds. He very sincerely doesn't understand why the greedy manner in which he changed his mind would turn people against him, because he feels people should be happy Rufus doesn't need to be moved, and everyone should rush to see him as they construct their new business. This gentleman fully believes in his heart that everyone should be happy and supportive, because, quote, we have decided to care about the fish now, without understanding that many people don't view caring as something that can be turned on and off like a switch. Rufus is fine right now, but it doesn't seem unlikely that the shine and expense of caring for giant Rufus without a payday could wear thin eventually. It seemed very easy for this gentleman to change his mind on Rufus's fate, and so we are just as worried that it might happen again just as fast. When the dust settles on this story and the press and public attention are nowhere to be found, the business owners may have to stop and realize there is no pot of gold in Rufus's tank and they may be very disappointed when the press isn't there to cover the opening of yet another Chinese restaurant in the San Gabriel Valley. Rufus is a paku and they are invasive, inexpensive fish. He's probably worth $80. His main value isn't monetary, it's sentimental for people who went to Bahuka and people who are into the Tiki community. So to make a long story long, we've decided the best plan of action is to hold on to this Rufus fund for six months as is because we have a feeling that the story of Rufus might not be over yet. We are looking for a non-profit to help us earmark it, and we promise to keep you in the loop. Everyone appreciates your patience and support more than you could possibly know. Thank you! This announcement merely incited further calamity from the Tiki community and their respective threads on the forums. Both the fate of Rufus and the thousands of donated dollars were now both indefinitely up in arms, and the owner would seemingly not budge on the matter. 
All communication to the update's poster proved unsuccessful, and no further information was provided to ease the growing concern. After the six-month deadline expired, the money was still not refunded. Alan Zhu had alluded to integrating Rufus into the new decor and giving him a larger tank in interviews. However, progress on the building's conversion into the new restaurant had slowed to a crawl, and the bahooka remained gutted and in need of renovation. The users on the Tiki Room forums assumed that Rufus had been left inside as per most of 2013, but this was not the case. On May 5th, 2014, one of the editors of the Los Angeles tour blog, Esoturic, recorded their visit to the dilapidated site, in search of Rufus. It still appeared sold, and majority of the tanks and decor had been removed. Immediate concern was placed on the fact that the large tank which housed Rufus had also been removed, and the Paku fish was nowhere to be found. Inside the bahooka, everything's been stripped away. It's a nice sign right there. There's a nice old sign right there, that's true. Good old days. Anyway, we're mostly concerned about Rufus, the famous Paku fish. Rufus was just inside here. But as you can see, there's no here anymore. And there's no Rufus. We're told that he's somewhere else and he's okay. But we're not really sure where he is or how okay he is. Because this place has been gutted. Some folk art over here. There's some folk art. The individual who filmed the video later recalled, quote, When I shot the video of the gutted restaurant linked above, it was all I could do not to cry, since until then there was still hope that Rufus was in the shuttered bahooka, being cared for by former staff. The forums had been circulating a claim supposedly made by a previous member of the kitchen staff, which was that Rufus had been released into a koi pond in Long Beach. Proof for this claim was dubious at best, and the theoretical transfer would have proven fatal for the warm water fish. A variant of this story also seemingly surfaced, which insinuated that Zhu himself had released the fish into a river, also in Long Beach. The esoteric article released alongside the video placed Zhu on blast, asking for an image of Rufus alongside the dazed newspaper as proof of life, and one commenter under the video requested his address in order to, quote, crap on his car. Others made more nuanced remarks or simply requested updates, which were not provided. About a week prior, LA Times reporter Frank Shiong, who had covered the story in February, had held a phone conversation between himself and Zhu regarding Rufus, although the Tiki Central thread which it was documented on appears to have been lost. On May 6th, Shiong tweeted in reply to Esoturic, Alan tells me that Rufus is in a pond at his house, and indeed, alive. What evidence is there that Alan is lying? The legitimacy of Zhu's claim was immediately called into question, and noting of Rufus's required temperatures as a tropical fish was repeated. Xiong did not elaborate, and Zhu and his associates remained radio silent indefinitely after the phone call. The esoteric article called for the use of hashtag Where's Rufus and hashtag Rufus Proof of Life, however these failed to equate to the popularity of the original hashtag Save Rufus. Worries were briefly quaffed, however, when a supposed insider emerged on Techie Central, claiming to have new images of the missing fish. Suspicions were quickly aroused when the user claimed they were having issues uploading images, but still passed them on to another user, who managed to post them to the forums. Although not archived, these pictures allegedly did not resemble Rufus, and the reaction was thereby opposite from what was intended. The fate of Rufus still remained unknown to the public, and many now assumed he had been disposed of. About a year later, in February 2015, members of Esoturic drove past the Bahuka to discover that the doors were open. By this point, forum discussion of Rufus had reduced to minimal, excluding occasional humour remembering the event and irritation due to lack of refunds from the crowdfunding campaign. Now taped to the realtor's sign was an application for a liquor licence on behalf of an entity under the name Moonlight Bar Incorporated. The article noted that renovations seemed to be occurring, and levelled more attacks against Zhu. Quote, 
Does this mean that Alan Jew, the restaurateur who clung fast to Rufus once he realized the fish was famous, removed him from the premises under mysterious circumstances, and has refused to provide proof that this delicate elderly creature survived this move, is no longer in the picture? If so, will we ever know what happened to Rufus? No further updates had been released to the public since the article's original publication. The Bahuka reopened as Moonlight Bar in July of 2015 with online reviews frequently alluding to the presence of the Bahuka previously. The top-rated Yelp review reads, Ah, what a transformation from the old Bahuka restaurant that has been at that location for many years. Now it's Chinese-owned and is called Moonlight. Interesting name. The outside still looks the same as the Bahuka, hideous because of its Hawaiian theme, and the cannons are still outside in the parking lot painted white. These Yelp reviews neglected to mention any decorative fish or aquariums, save for baseless claims that a quote, 20 year old plus fish, likely referring to Rufus, had been killed by the new owners. Images of the interior showed no fish tanks. Moonlight Bar also closed at an unknown time before February of 2017, as evidenced by the various Google Street View images of the building. The restaurant was now named Cinnabar and served similar cuisine to its previous inhabitant. Mentions of Rufus were non-existent, reviews left fewer allusions to the former occupants, and images of the interior again show no aquariums. 2019 saw the location transform yet again into an Asian seafood restaurant under the name King's Table. Mentions of live fish or the bahuka are nil. One Yelp user asked in 2019, Is this restaurant closed or run out of business? I have tried to call the phone number but found T disconnected. A reply reads, I believe so. Try going twice on Friday nights and pass by several times a week. It's always dark, lots are empty, and no one answers the phone. Discussion of Rufus's whereabouts is virtually unheard of across internet communities, and the Tiki Central forums, as I've mentioned, are currently inaccessible due to technical difficulties. The Bahuka itself is merely a nostalgic memory now, and the most recent Google Street View images still shows King's Table as open. The fate of Rufus, a beloved elderly Paku fish, remains the biggest mystery within the dwindling Tiki community, and until someone with personal ties to the restaurant comes forward, it will stay like that indefinitely.